Good morning, St. Stephen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for our time of worship on this morning. We have reached the second Sunday in December, uh, now uh, more than halfway into this year's season of Advent, where we are just de delighted and elated uh, to celebrate the birth of our Savior uh, Jesus Christ, because without the birth, there, can no, there can't be any uh, death and resurrection. Uh, so we know that this time of our uh, Christian faith uh, is, is celebratory. Uh, we commemorate it, uh, and we are just grateful to be here uh, to worship one more time uh, in the house of the Lord, so that way we can give the Lord our highest praise. Amen? Amen. Why don't we go ahead and give him a little praise this morning? Sunday in December and on this third Sunday in Advent. 
I want to say I appreciate your presence with us this morning. I'm grateful for those of you who join us on Facebook Live, who call into our conference call line, or who are watching by way of YouTube. I believe that God has a wonderful blessing in store for us today as we enter into this worship experience. So I'm going to ask that you would put aside anything that might try to distract you this morning so that we can have our minds, our hearts, and our spirits focused on the things of God. I pray that God blessed you on last week, and I say that there's no better way for us to start out this week than to be with our brothers and sisters in the faith. So let us prepare our hearts and minds now to go further in this worship experience and see all that God has in store for us. Again, thank you for being with us this morning. The third Sunday of Advent is joy. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Luke 2, 8 through 12. The joy of Jesus the Christ are always abiding us. Biblical joy is different than what most people think of as joy. It is not just a happy emotion that we either feel or don't feel. It is a state of being that finds its source in God. The Bible is clear that joy comes from God, and other joy is a product of what God has done and continues to do. This joy I have, the world can give it, and the world can take it away. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds now to lift up our voices as we sing our hymn of praise. Hymn number 120, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Without any further lining, let us sing this great hymn of the church together. Let the church say amen. Bow your heads with me now in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come again on this day thanking you for this another day that you have allowed us to see. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being our Father and allowing us to be your children. 
It's so good to be in the house of worship one more time, gathered together with the people of God. I pray, Heavenly Father, as we unite together on this morning, that you will allow your presence to be known one more time. We need to know, Heavenly Father, that you are the God that is able to meet us at our point of need, that you're the God that can do anything but fail. So we welcome you in this morning, for you truly are deserving of all the praise, worship, and honor that we can give to you on today. Lord, I ask that you would just be with us in every song that is sung, every prayer that is prayed, and be with us, Heavenly Father, as your word goes forth on this morning. And again, you are welcome in this place, and we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence this morning. In the present, in the powerful name of Jesus, we pray that the people of God say, Amen. Good morning. A reading from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. A word from God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. We are so grateful that you have joined us for worship. The Women's Missionary Society, the Young People's Department, and the Lay Organization are teaming up again to collect donations for the Christmas Unity Drive Project on Saturday, December 18th from 12 until 2. St. Stephen is again a drop-off location. They are asking for the following. New twin-size linens, men's and women's underwear, lightly used or new clothing, men and women's toiletries. Again, twin-size linens, men and women's underwear, lightly used or new clothing, and men and women's toiletries. The items do not need to be wrapped, and members of each organization will be at the church on December 18th between noon and 2 to receive your donations. Our weekly activities, Bible study on Tuesday and Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. via Facebook and conference call. Prayer every Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. via our conference call number. The soup kitchen is still serving hot meals to those who show up on Wednesday and Thursday between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. as takeout only. On Sunday, Reverend Erica teaches a Sunday school lesson at 8 o'clock via the conference call number, and then our worship service begins at 10 a.m. December birthdays are on the screen. Happy birthday or happy anniversary to everyone who celebrated this past week. May God continue to bless you with many more. Again, thank you so much for joining us for worship. Have a very blessed week. Thank you for giving generously to what God is doing through the church family at St. Stephen. There are several ways to give. Number one, you can give in person. Drop your contribution in the mail slot of the church. Number two, you can also participate in online giving. Online giving through PayPal is fast, convenient, and secure. You can set this up as a one-time donation or a reoccurring gift. Visit the church website at www.stephenchicago.org. That's www.stephenchicago.org. Please designate in the memo section if your gift is a tithe, offering, general contribution, or targeted to a special ministry. Or, number three, you can also give through Cash App at dollar sign S-S-A-M-E-C-H-G-O. And lastly, you can give by mail. Send your contribution to the St. Stephen's AME Church. The church's address is 3042 West Washington Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60612. Attention, Finance Department. Be sure to include your name and address on the check so that a record of your contribution can be provided for tax purposes. Thank you.
Well, I pray that you have been blessed by our worship service on this morning. I don't know about you, but my soul is excited about the things of God. As we ready ourselves to hear God's word, I'm going to ask that Sister Mary Boone will play for us, I Need Thee Every Hour. Let us pray. Father, again, we're just so grateful that for all that has been done on this morning. Now, Lord, as we prepare to hear your word, I ask that you would speak to me and through me a word that might encourage, that might allow and enlighten, and a word that might give power unto your people. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that has been done. And I stand in anticipation for that which you are about to do. I give the honor, the glory, and the praise. In the priceless name of Jesus, I pray. Let the people of God say, Amen. Hear God's word. Our passage of scripture for this morning comes out of John 6 chapter. We want to lift up verses 1 through 13. I'm reading to you again from the New International Version, and it reads as follows. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far would they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Thus ends the reading. May God add a blessing to the reader, the hearer, and the doers of God's holy word. From this passage of scripture that we've read on this morning, I would like to press upon your heart, press upon my own heart this thought. From your hands to God's. From your hands to God's. On first Sunday, we began a new series that will take us through the month of December entitled Conduits of God's Goodness. The series intent is to direct our attention to the matter of generosity, which is sharing one's gifts or blessings, blessings voluntarily according to one's ability to give. Being generous is not a practice driven by being seen or garnering attention for the sake of aggrandizement, but it is a practice driven by an internal engine to enrich and make a difference in the world in which we live. The keys that ignite this internal engine 
often center around one or more motives such as gratitude, belief in a cause, value possibilities, or a passion to invest in humanity. Whatever the cause of motivation, this practice is not usually a one-time affair, but, an, but a commitment to a way of life. In our selected text for this series, John 6, 1 through 13, we derive three matters with which we are to be generous. We are to be generous with our sensitivity. We are to be generous with our substance. And we are to be generous with our service. And in doing so, we become pleasing unto God, are used to advance the kingdom, increase in our faith, and experience the immeasurable essence of the, internal, of the eternal in our daily lives. Last week, addressing generosity and our sensitivity, we zeroed in on verse 5, which stated, When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Out of this verse, we know that, that Jesus demonstrates to be generous with our, with our sensitivity is to go beyond seeing inwardly only to observe the needs that affect us, but to look outwardly as well to see the concerns and needs of others that share with us in time and space. Yes, to be generous with our sensitivity is to matriculate and have our spirit graduate from the school of thought that transforms our I to we, our me to us, and our mind to ours. Today, as we concentrate on being generous with our substance, verse 9 will feed our thoughts for this message this morning. It states, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far would they go among so many? I have chosen this verse as our point of departure because it speaks to what I believe is a systemic practice of people when they have been given a task that appears to be insurmountable to them or are encouraged to give from their personal or collective means. And that systemic practice is to shrink and diminish in their own eyes. Due to socialization, the process whereby people learn attitudes, values, and actions appropriate as members of a particular culture, we have a tendency to feel what we have is inadequate, inadequate or insufficient. This shaping of mind and belief fosters the notion what we need is not within our possession, but is outside of us, out of reach, out of touch, and out of our grasp. Therefore, this specific verse is so important because from it and through it, a shift in thought and understanding takes place as Jesus sows a promising paradigm of possibility and plenty by using a little boy's meal of fish and loaves. This verse about fish and loaves sandwiched in the middle of the larger body of scripture we read about this morning teaches us several lessons that help that help us that helps us adopt a lifestyle of generosity. It helps us adopt this lifestyle if we would just simply hear and adhere to the words that are spoken. I'd like to spend just a few minutes now to look at the lesson to look and see what this text shows us on this day. The first point that we're able to make when we read this passage of scripture and use the verse that we zero in on this morning is this. We must live by mind sight and not eyesight. Let me say that again. We learn from this passage of scripture that we've read today. We must live by mind sight and not eyesight. When you're talking about or dealing with eyesight, you're talking about matters in your physical view that do not take you any further than your current situation. However, when we're talking about living by mind sight, mind sight gives one the ability to think beyond the problem before their eyes and allows one to conceptualize a remedy or solution. We must live by mind sight. In fact, everybody ought to say mind sight. Somebody ought to put it in the thread, mind sight. 
Proverbs 23, 7 says to us, for as a man thinker or a woman thinking in his or her heart, so they are, so he is, or so she is. When you look at Hebrews, the 12th chapter in the second verse, it speaks of Jesus and it says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Meaning that Jesus didn't just simply look at the predicament that he was in, that he was in with eyesight, but he used his mind sight and he was able to look beyond the cross and see the joy that was set before him. And as a result, it allowed him to endure the cross. Then there's that book that you have read or had read to you when you were younger about the little engine that could. That book tells us that there was a train that stopped that was filled with, or filled with toys. But this little engine backed up and it started to pull the train up the hill. It was a difficult task that it had. But the train, the little engine started saying to itself, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. And as a result, it was able to make it up the hill. Again, this passage of scripture, this, this verse that we center in on today, dealing with the fish and the loaves, it lets us know that we have to live by mind sight and not eyesight. We must function, we must move, we must live, and we must breathe by mind sight. Again, everyone say mind sight. That's the first point that we see out of this text. The next point we see is this. No amount is too small when used for the purposes of God. Let me say that again this morning. No amount is too small when used for the purposes of God. Remember again the dilemma that they are in. The people have been with Jesus all day long and Jesus is now gone and he sat down upon a hill and they have gathered around him and they have been with him all day long. Nighttime has fallen and Jesus knows that if we send the people away that some of them will faint along the way. But there's a problem. Philip says we don't have any money in our account. He says, even if we did have enough money, uh, we couldn't buy enough to give each person a bite of the bread. And then there was Andrew who made a comment. And if I'll be honest with you, I really think that Andrew's comment is one of uh, sarcasm because I believe that he was trying to express the dire uh, need or situation that they were in. And he says, well, here's a little boy who has a lunch, a little boy who has a meal with two fish and five loaves. Truly or surely, uh, Andrew didn't think that this boy's uh, meal would be able to feed everyone. But what they didn't realize and what Jesus teaches us is that when it comes to God, God is not so much concerned about our possessions. That's not what really matters. But what matters is the sum of one's willingness to serve God with what they have. Can I say it this way? With God, it is not the sum of one's possessions that matters. It is the sum of one's willingness to serve God that matters. I say that to you because I've seen those who are gifted, but sometimes you get the gifted who are unwilling. Sometimes you get the smart, but they're unwilling. There are those who are rich, but they are unwilling. Those who are influential, but they're unwilling. Those who are experienced or available, but they are unwilling. Unwilling. You've heard me say so many times before, it's not about our ableness. It is about our willingness. There is a black and white movie of old uh, called In Shady Green Pastures where a drunken Noah comes up to uh, God and says, eyes ain't much, but eyes all you got. In other words, he's saying, I don't bring a whole lot to the table. I can't even offer you a lot, but I do make myself available. And that's what this text teaches us. It's not how much that you have that matters as much as it is how much you're willing to use what you have for God's purposes. That's what really counts. No amount is too small when it's used for the purposes of God. And then lastly, what this text shows us or teaches us is that we have to take what's in our hands and we have to place it into God's hands. Do you remember when we were reading this passage of scripture, what is said of, said of Jesus? This text indicated that Jesus already knew what he was going to do when he asked, uh, asked them to feed the crowd or feed the multitude that had gathered around him. 
That means that when Philip saw, uh, saw the people or Andrew saw the boy with the lunch, Jesus had already seen the boy and he knew what he was going to do. What Jesus' uh, plan was is to use this little boy as a lesson for those who had gathered on that day. And it's a lesson that you and I can learn this morning. And the lesson is this. Regardless of who you are and regardless of what you have, if you take what you have in your hand and place it in, place it in God's hands, God can use it. God can bless it. God can multiply it. And God can make a difference. I know some of us feel like we don't have enough. We don't know enough. We don't possess enough. But it's not about what you have. It's about your willingness to give what you have to God. And that's what God wants us to do, regardless of whatever it may be, to take what gifts, what blessings we have received and give it back to God. And when God receives it, receives it, God uses it to make a difference with those that you and I are privileged to engage each and every day. Maybe you only know one song. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, that is enough. Maybe you only know one passage of scripture. That is enough. Maybe you only got a couple of dollars in your pocket. Listen, that is enough. It's not about what you possess, but it's about what you have in your hand and you're giving it over to God. And what the Lord is trying to teach us through this little boy who gave the two fish and the, the few loaves of bread is that if you will uh, trust me, if you will believe in me, if you'll take what's in your hand and place it in my hand, you with who you are and what you have, you can live a lifestyle of generosity. And that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to live a lifestyle of generosity, knowing that everything that we have or whatever we have, it is enough. Let the church say amen. Well, I pray that you have been encouraged on this morning to live a lifestyle of generosity because God wants to use you and what you have in a special way to touch others, to lift others, to encourage others. Don't get caught up in comparing what you have in your hands to what someone else may have in their hands. It's all about your willing, willingness to take it and to give it to the Lord. And if you can give that to the Lord, the Lord will take it and the Lord will make a difference. Let the church say, amen. Maybe you're with us on this day and you don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about that's able to use our lives and our possessions to be a blessing unto others. Well, I want to let you know that you can have a relationship with the Lord today. And it's simply by asking Jesus into your life. I know that you've made mistakes and you've fallen short. And I say that not to accuse you, but because we all have fallen short of the glory of God. We all have made mistakes. But here's what I know through my own life is that I've given my life over to God and I've asked God to come in. And the Lord has made a difference. And because the Lord is no respecter of person, the Lord will do the same thing for you. So if you desire to be in relationship with Jesus today, all you have to do is say, Lord, come into my life and save me. What you say, what you do by saying that is, Lord, I'm turning away from this world and I'm turning to you. And I want you to be my Lord and Savior. And that's exactly what Jesus will do. You will come into the fellowship of faith this morning by asking the Lord to come into your life. Maybe you're with us today and you don't have a church home. Well, I believe that there's no better place to be a part of than St. Stephen African Methodist Episcopal Church. We are blessed to be a family church, to be a church that has, uh, has concern one for another. I'm not trying to express to anyone that we are a perfect church. All of us make mistakes, uh, but we do serve a perfect God. And we believe by your joining us today, you will help us to do the work that God has called us to do in this day and age. There is, a, there is an email address on the screen that you can reach out to us on today. And if you have decided to give your life to Christ or if you have decided to come and join the church or both of them, reach out to us. And if you do so and let us know what decision you have made, someone will get back in contact with you. And what they'll do is they'll pray with you, they'll praise God for you, and they'll welcome you into the family of faith. Maybe you're here with us on this morning again have some struggles or hardships that you're facing or going through. Well, I want to let you know that we serve a God and we saw this on this morning. We serve a God that is able to meet our needs. 
And so I encourage you today to bring your burden, to bring that heaviness, to bring whatever that weight may be that's bearing down upon you, to bring it before the Lord. And let us stand together as brothers and sisters in faith, believing and trusting God as we lift up our voices in prayer. Maybe you're with us and it's not you necessarily that's going through something, but you know someone who's dealing with some problems. You know someone who's dealing with issues. Well, we saw this young boy uh, used, or this young boy's lunch used as a conduit of God's grace and mercy. We saw others blessed because of him. And that's what God can do through you. God can use your life to be a blessing to your brother, your sister, your family member, your coworker, whoever it may be. So if you call out their names, if you put place them on your heart today, we're believing that as we pray together that God will move in a miraculous way, and that God will intervene and bring about a change. Whatever the concern is, I want us to know on this morning that God can handle it. Would you join me now in a word of prayer? Let us bow our heads. Father, we do thank you for this day and this time that we have been able to share one with another. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the power that's found in your word. Lord, as we gather on this morning, we just want to say thank you for those who have made the decision to give their lives unto you or to ask you into their lives in order that you might be the Savior. We also want to say thank you for that one who said that they want to be a part of St. Stephen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we welcome them the same way that you welcomed us. For those who are dealing with burdens or know someone who's dealing with burdens, God, we present them before you. But we know that you are a God that is attentive to our needs. And so we just simply ask right now that you would navigate all through all the external matters and that you would meet us this morning at our point of need and that you would make a difference in our lives. Because we are a people of faith, we can thank you not only for the things that you have done, but as we lift up our prayers this morning, our cares and our concerns, we also can thank you for that which we believe you are about to do. So Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for your love. This has been a tremendous day. It's been a glorious day that we've been able to gather as brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, Lord, as we prepare to come down from this mountain, we want to say thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what has entered into the heart of men and women. Now, not unto us, but unto him who is able to keep us safe from falling and present us faultless before the King. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Let every heart say, Amen. Well, I want to say thank you again for being with us on this day. We appreciate your presence. Again, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we want to hear from you. We pray that you are being blessed by our worship services. Until we meet again, we pray that you have the most glorious day, and we look forward to sharing with you again real soon. God bless you and keep you as our prayer.